Hello, friends from the comic book and manga world. My name is G. And I'm Hector. Uh, we're here to talk about our picks for the May 8th, 2023 FOC. Hector and I, we work for Penguin Random House, and we manage sales into the international direct market around the world. So the titles that you'll see are those that we can sell into that market. And uh, if you didn't know, aside from YouTube, we are also on other social media platforms. So it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And of course, on YouTube at PRH International Comics, um, where you'll see our news and updates. Uh, definitely uh, check us out there. Comment down below uh, on your picks for this week as well. Um, things that you're excited for. I uh, would love to hear from you. And yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah. All right. And first up is my pick. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the last Ronin, the covers. This is just a reminder of you all because this is such a huge and popular um, series. And for any fans out there who loved the last Ronin uh, and who can't get enough of it uh, and who are collectors, you may want to grab this because you could um, see the wonderful artwork uh, that's if you've been collecting in single issues, you'll be able to see collected here. Um, so this comes out on June 13th from IDW. So highly recommend picking this one up. Yes, very cool. And next up, uh, one of my picks is Beatrix Rose Villagilante, uh, graphic novel written by Stephanie Phillips, illustrated by Valeria Fak uh, Um And now, Beatrix Rose is actually a adaptation of uh, Mark Dawson's uh, novels of the same character, Beatrix Rose, that are very popular. And it this is a character, it's an assassin, sort of a little bit kind of like, uh, I, I, from what I was reading, like Black Widow kind of character. Um, and she's called a. Uh, she's she's um, in the story of this graphic novel. She's in Hong Kong, so the story takes place in Hong Kong, and she's um, uh, working for the triads in Hong Kong. And but then somebody, a killer, starts killing their, his her bosses. So she in the killers called the. Uh, uh, they call him a demon because how gruesome he is and how he's killing everybody and she has to obviously go after it and try to you know protect her means of employment uh which is working for the triad um very very cool art i put in here some of the interiors for it i obviously um i'm also excited because the like i said the adaptation into graphic novel into into comics was done by was written by Stephanie Phillips. I'm a big, big fan and you might know Stephanie Phillips for a lot of things. But recently she's doing currently a run with the uh, Marvel comics for Cosmic Ghost, Ghost Rider, for Rogue and Gambit, and also the upcoming Star Wars Return of the Jedi Lando number one one shot. So this is a very cool coming right up. And next uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, one of my picks is Star Wars Yoda number eight. This is the Takashi Okazaki variant. And for those of you who know or don't know about who Takashi Okazaki is, he's an, um, an amazing visual arts artist and comic book writer and illustrator and, and manga writer and illustrator. He's the creator of Afro Samurai. And he also has worked in, um, a, uh, you know, covers and illustrations all over the industry. But most recently, Star Wars Visions, um, when he he directed the art and they signed the characters for the first story of, of the first season of Star Wars Visions that came out last year, which was called, uh, the episode was called The Duel, and he introduced this character that everybody went crazy over, which is the Ronin, um, sort of like a samurai with lightsaber <laughs> uh, in the Star Wars um, uh, universe. And he uh, 
you know, and he also has done a lot of covers for like Dark Ages, Miles Morales, uh, uh, recently Star Wars, Darth Vader, Black, White and Red, uh, Deadpool, Black, White and Blood and many, many, many more. Uh, and his style is very distinctive. I mean, you look at this and you put it uh, and you, I instantly thought, oh, I recognize this. And then, oh, Afro Samurai definitely looks very cool. And I love how he played with, you know, the black and white, the grays, but also having the green of the lightsaber and also the reflection of the light on, on Yoda's face and um, his clothes. This is very, very cool. Can't wait to get this one. Okay, and I also, well, I got into the Star Wars mood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> perfect for uh, Star Wars picked... Day coming up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, it's today, May the 4th, the, the day that we're filming this, at least. Uh, so, it must have been, you know, all the hype. Yeah. I should just actually get started here. <laughs> I'm meandering uh, because this is such a cool cover and I want uh, to stay long here, I guess. Yeah. This is Star Wars, The Mandalorian Season 2. Uh, this is the Ricky Egawa variant. We have the regular cover, but then we also have the version variant, which is a 1 in 100. Um, I just like the fact that Baby Yoda is being patted on the head and then... Um, Hector noticed that if you looked into and gazed into baby Yoda's beady eyes, beady big eyes, you can see who's patting him on the head. Um, the Mandalorian's uh, helmet, you could see <laughs> as if it's pupils, and baby, yeah, but it's a reflection yeah. of um, of the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda's eyes, which is quite cool. It's a cool detail. I just like yeah. the angle this is at. Like it's it's as like you're just you're in the perspective of looking down on yeah. this uh, cute Yoda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just in this baby carrier, this mm -hmm. uh, Mandalorian carrying him around. All right. Uh, next up is the Great British Bump Off. Uh, this is for issue number three. This is cover B by Philippa. Philippa, sorry, that was uh, that's a misprint. It's actually Philippa Belessa. Um, and uh, so this series, if you don't know, it's sort of a cross between the Great British Bake Off and Agatha Christie. And there's uh, a mystery and, and somebody killing people <laughs> in a competition and a bake-off. Um, very fun. And this cover in particular, I love this cover. Um, so Filippa Vilesa, who's originally from Portugal and it's living in, she's living in Portugal at the moment. She's a very big, um, no, uh, a big name in Europe, in that area of Portugal, and um, in Spain, as far as graphic uh, design and art, and also uh, doing comics and graphic novels and things like that. And not only that, she um, recently, she uh, I think she's publishing, not, it hasn't come out yet, sort of a semi-biographical uh, sort of funny graphic novel in this art style, which is she's doing it in Spanish and Portuguese. I saw that it's uh, I think it's uh, self-published, and the name in Spanish is "Hacerse Mayor es una mierda," which translates to uh, "Getting older is the shit," or you know, put put in whatever bad word you want in there. Mierda is, is translates to shit. <laughs> so. Um, it, and it looks really cool. I looking into her Instagram and going into an online and seeing all the illustrations. She's amazing. And I was looking and looking, but I think this is the first time she's doing art for a U.S. Uh, comic book. I might be wrong, but I I was looking and looking. I couldn't find any other art from Filippo Valesa um, in the or comic books in the U.S. So this is also a big deal because of that. So really looking forward to this. I love this art. I love how funny it is. And it kind of, I love the, the all the 
tiny details that you put into into it while at the same time make it it's such a beautiful piece of art um so i don't know if this was done purposefully but it kind of reminds me of popeye with the anchor oh, tattoo yeah. on the arm i don't yeah, know if I that was read like the, i haven't read the this yet so it may be the maybe character like ha it's part of the character a little yeah. bit of the easter i i don't know i have no idea but they, it just it gave yeah. me that vibe i don't know yeah Who knows? yeah 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 very very cool all right next up okay uh yes. next is deadpool batter blood issue number one this is the scotty young variant which is very cool i i just like I just like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, a very good Scotty Young uh, piece. This one is interesting because um, it's a follow up to Bad Blood, the the run that Rob Liefeld did previously. So he's also doing the writing on this one as well. Um, so if you wanted a continuation of that, here you go. Um, with just really cool cover art uh, to come with it. So yeah. yeah. Very neat. And oh, next up, oh, I'm so excited about this book. Three more. Number one, this is very in V by uh, Franca Villa, uh, Francesco Franca Villa. Um, and um, I, sorry, I, oops, sorry. I, um, this is the, the creator, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it. I'm such a, such a fan of 30 Days of Night. I forgot the name of the writer, but he writes this one too. And uh, it's been a while since I read uh, something from him. And he's such a big name and he's did so great, so great with 30 Days of Nights and all the spinoffs. And I read all of them and they were amazing. And now he's come to another IDW uh, book for horror sort of mystery and then we have this cover by Francesco Francavilla who's which is amazing it's very cool um and you have a church and this mysterious figure kind of floating behind it and Francesco Francavilla um if you re kind of recognize the art has the, the recently done um that art for the Joker the man who stopped laughing for covers and he also did covers for Action Comics, Amazing Spider-Man, American Vampire. But also he did the covers, the main covers, and the art for Afterlife Archie. And that, if you remember those covers and remember the art, you see that definitely reflected on this on this cover, uh, that style. Um, so very, very good, very cool. Looking forward to this one. And oops, sorry. There we go. Uh, yes, we have Loki issue number one. This is the art germ variant. And then there's also the one in 100 version uh, variant. This is like very, um, is very much in the style of art germ when he does that like very beautiful, almost like portraits, um, like, char mm -hmm. like char character shots like this um this story uh is is basically loki I, I find it interesting loki um had created this like weapon in the past that is that he's trying to look for across the 10 realms and he has to it goes through like like different versions of loki um and personas as you're like going through the story and so we have lady loki here on the cover um very beautifully uh illustrated as you'll see yeah very very cool mm -hmm. then and that's it and every week we kind of uh give you a little bit of news recent news that have come out and in this case uh this came out at the end of last week um um on the twitter account of this manga and the creator of time the knot with an amagam amagami sister they announced that uh an anime for it has uh, will be created so stay tuned for more details you have on the left i put the post uh announcing that the anime was uh announced <laughs> 
But also on the right is the cover of uh, issue number one in English, which it goes on sale in October. And I noticed that the next one, number two, is in December. It's like every other month. I think we're going to get uh, an issue from this one. So uh, look forward to it. It looks very cool. And like I said, it's fresh, fresh off the press, you know. And yeah. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, as always, we have a lot of fun doing these. Uh, uh, again, just check out our social media platforms uh, at PRH International Comics. I'll put it in the description below so that you can easily access it. And yeah, that's it for 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 this week, y'all. Um, <laughs> I'm like terrible at ending things, uh, but definitely come <laughs> back more for next week because uh, we do this a, a lot. So yeah. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye.